Here's the way fat loss works. So I just told you the weight loss way of doing it. Some people can go three days, five days, seven days, couple weeks doing that weight loss plan, but sooner or later, they're going to get to continuous meal. The continuous meal goes to continuous month, right? Instead, we should be eating preemptively. Here's what it looks like. I wake up and I have a four egg white omelet. Before I ever get hungry, at 10 a.m., I'm not hungry, I'm not craving anything. I'm not even thinking about food. But I know if I don't feed myself, I'm going to be in trouble, and I'm going to be getting a quesadilla at lunch. So instead of doing that, I eat a protein bar. Just enough to hold me over so that by the time I get to lunch, I'm not hungry. I'm not craving anything. So then I say, hey, I'll take the chicken salad for lunch. Why? Because I never let my cravings and hunger get the best of me, so I can make that decision. Right? Three o'clock rolls around. I'm not hungry yet. I feel good. I do an apple and some almonds. Because I know if I don't, at four o'clock, I'm hitting five guys. Then I get home at four o'clock, after, maybe after my workout, and I have a protein shake. I'm still not hungry. I'm still not craving anything. Right? And then I have my dinner. And all day long, I controlled my blood sugar, I controlled my cravings, I controlled my hunger, and I'm in fat-burning mode now. Now think about it this way. If you're on your way home after that weight loss diet, cereal, a little bit of salad, and you're going by the gym, are you going to be more or less likely to work out that day? Less, right? Because you're going to be thinking about food. I got Oreos in the cupboard. I'm going home. You know, that's, that's what we do. Instead of if you're eating this way, you're going to have energy, you're going to be ready to go to the gym. So this is kind of the, the new paradigm shift. So some people will be like, come on, Jade, I mean, I heard that, you know, ultimately it does come down to calories, doesn't it? Isn't it all back to calories? And it's true. It all comes back to calories. Except if we control our hormones, we never let ourselves overeat. If we eat high volume foods with lots of protein and fiber, we actually end up eating less. Research shows us that. So we can naturally regulate our calorie intake. If we try to fool our bodies, trick it, do the opposite, more times than not, our body will rebound because we are designed to seek out food. Right? That's what we're designed for. We live in a world where food is abundant everywhere, but our physiology doesn't know that. We come from a place where the next meal wasn't guaranteed. So our physiology is thinking, hey, you know, I didn't eat for three days. I need to eat for four, five, maybe even a week to make sure I have enough fat to survive that again, even though you know the difference. Here's the other thing that people need to understand. There's something that's called trigger foods. So I can sit here and you can say, okay, Jay, this all makes sense. This is great. Tell me what I need to eat. And I can say, okay, well, you should eat, you know, scrambled egg whites in the morning and, you know, fruits and vegetables and that kind of stuff. Stay away from these foods, stay away from those foods. And guess what? Half this room is going to do what I tell them and they're going to get great results. Right? The other half, not so much. And they're going to be like, what's going on? I'm doing everything right. And that's because we're all different. Some of you can eat cheese and have no problem. Some of you are going to find that cheese puts weight on us because it has a different insulin response in all of us. So I can eat cheese and gain muscle. You can eat cheese and gain fat. I can eat cheese and it satisfies my hunger. You can eat cheese and it makes me, you crave certain things. What about this? Yogurt, right? Healthy food, right? Dairy. For some people, that causes a problem. What about this? Some people can have a glass of wine every night with dinner. Chicken breast, salad, glass of wine, and have no problems and burn fat like crazy. Some people can have one glass of wine on a weekend and not get back to fat burning mode until Wednesday or Thursday. I know it's not easy, no one wants to hear that, but that's the way it is. So no one, no doctors are telling you this. What about diet soda? For some people, diet soda is not a problem at all. Not a problem. It's, there's no calories in it, doesn't cause any problems for them. They go on just fine. For some people, this causes all kinds of cravings for sweets. So we each have to be working at realizing that it's not just calories in and calories out, that we're all different. So not only do we need to pay attention to preemptive eating and the types of foods we have, but we need to pay attention to this kind of stuff as well. And that's really important. Let's talk a little bit about exercise. How many people saw this Time Magazine issue that basically said exercise is useless for weight loss? Right? So some people raised their hand. 
The myth about exercise. So what they studied was aerobic exercise primarily, going out for a job. And the truth is, it's not useless. The problem is, is, though, is it will make you crave certain things. So what they're saying is people who do a lot of this kind of stuff end up craving the same things that you crave if you avoid food. Sugar, fat, and salt. And so the calories all set one another there. So again, preemptive eating is very important around exercise, right? You don't want to go all day long without eating and then go for a long run. And then come home because, again, continuous meal sets in. So you need to be paying attention to that as well. What I'm trying to get people to understand is we are each uniquely different. And we need to start looking at things you know, differently than just calories in, calories out. So real quickly, tools for weight loss. This is what they tell you to do, right? Weight loss. Eat less, exercise more. That is not going to work for the vast majority of people. And we can, sit, we can sit around. You don't need to listen to me to tell you that, right? Look around. Isn't that what we've been hearing forever and ever and ever? And aren't we getting bigger and bigger and bigger? <coughs> Tools for fat loss. A hormonally balanced diet. And that confuses people sometimes because they think estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. But what I'm talking about is the hormones that balance blood sugar, that balance energy, <coughs> that control hunger. These are just signaling molecules. When you eat certain foods, your stomach will stretch. The stretch create, you know, releases stress receptors, which release hormones that go up to the brain and say, hey, Jade, stop eating. You've had enough. Certain foods make us feel full for longer, <clears throat> primarily protein foods, fiber foods. So the idea is to eat more of the right things more often, preemptive eating. And here's one trick that I'll give you, right, because I, you know, people talk about fiber, right? So if I say to you guys, eat more fiber, what's the first thing you think of? Cereal, right? Whole grains, that kind of thing. Problem is, yeah, it has a lot of fiber, but guess what else it has a lot of? With it. Starch, sugar. And I say starch slash sugar because they're the same thing. So let me show you what I mean when I say fiber. I mean fruits and vegetables. And here's why. Let's say, um, let's say that a whole grain has this much fiber in it, right? And it has this much starch in it, okay? Now, a fruit has this much fiber, but this much starch. And a vegetable has this much fiber, but this much starch. It's the relative ratio that makes the difference. Does that make sense? So you don't want to just be eating high fiber foods if it's coming along with a huge starch load. And the way that you want to do that is just focus primarily on fruits and vegetables. Again, trigger foods, some very sweet foods are people's trigger foods. Some people can eat bananas all day long. Other people have a problem with bananas. So you have to look at that. Bananas are healthy food. It's never a food I would tell anyone not to eat. But some of my fat loss clients, I say, you know what, you're doing everything right. You're not getting any results. Those bananas that you're having are probably an issue, maybe. Let's take them out and see what happens. And sometimes they begin to move. Focus on hunger, cravings, and energy, not calories. If you focus on calories and you play that game, you're going to be doing continuous meal more times than not. You guys know this. I do it. We all do it. It's normal. If you instead focus on hunger, cravings, and energy, you're going to be able to figure out your body. You're going to be able to figure out your own fat loss formula. You're going to be able to figure out, you know what, every time I miss that protein bar at 10 a.m., I'm having ice cream at 11 and it really does work like that. It really does work like that. You know, so you, you may not see that. You may not realize that the choice to sleep in, you know, extra hitting your snooze button because you only got five hours of sleep last night, causes you to crave different things when you get eight hours of sleep. That those choices to stay up and watch a sitcom late at night make a difference between what you're craving and what you're eating the next day. And if you're just thinking calories, you don't think it matters. If you ask your doctor, they're going to tell you it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It matters. I mean, it matters big time. 